I just want to thank everybody. Go ahead. I just want to thank everybody. Uh, this last year, I've had a year off. Five years before that, I had 25 fights. I was moving quick. Been on national television eight times. Uh, it was a lot for a kid to handle. I'll tell you that, mentally. And I took out a lot of things, but this last year off gave me everything I needed to know. Um, I fought one of the best in the world, Robert Grail, and uh, I'm, I know I'll be a world champion in just a matter of time. I'm becoming more mentally stronger, beyond physically. I'm, I was already stronger, I'm even getting stronger that way. So, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of hell to be raised. Uh, I'm, I will bring the world title on me. And I'm, I'm gonna clean on everybody, that, anybody that wants, wants to fight me. I just need my hometown to bag me so we can get this world title back here and I'll, I'll do the rest. I'll knock him, knock him out. That's it. Any questions? Very good. Thanks. You're back. How you guys doing today? All right. I just want to make a few statements. Um, my first statement is I want to give up the utmost respect to all the soldiers out there fighting for my freedom, our freedom, anybody in the United States. You know what, you gotta represent the United States because I got the red, white, blue running through my veins and I love America, man. There's no place like it. So if you live in America, man, represent the United States. My second statement is, there's something that really irritates me about this cable. I just don't understand how you call yourself the pretty warrior but you look like you got slapped with an ugly stick. The only thing I can say that's gonna be pretty about him is his past when I give him on April 18th. So you guys come and you will see it go down April 18th. Third of all, when the American boys get in the ring, you know you're gonna get your money's worth. Plus you got the Predator on the card, got John Laborda, Cerecio. It's gonna go down that way, so. Come one, come all, April 18th, you're gonna see both of them fall. That's a guarantee. Any questions? Yeah, well, I wonder if you can talk about uh, what what strengths you have that you utilize against them, if you can say anything about what weaknesses it is to take advantage of. Well, I was actually uh, talking to Bob about it last night. The thing about him is, is he's a fighter, you know, when you have a fighter with an undefeated record, they don't think they can lose, right? And there's thing, there's flaws in his thing that you know that I'm not really gonna talk about that I will expose that night that he don't see because he don't think that he can lose. But come April 18th, I'll give his first loss. Any questions? Yeah, this was a fight uh, probably two years in the making now, and um, they said at that time that you guys both advance your careers a little further before taking the fight. And now at this point in your career, do you feel like this is kind of a make or break fight as far as? Uh, propelling your career to the next level, the television level, national TV. Well, it, it's great to have that belt on the line now, you know, it's banking, it's, it's a stepping stone, it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, uh, what I plan on it to be, you know. Actually, Tony Gargalco was promoting that, and I told him, I said, watch, man, I'm gonna, you know, build this up, and, you know, uh, there was offers to make it happen, you know, and uh, at times, we had to offer him the fight and take it. He offered me the fight and take it. It just didn't make sense then. But right now it makes sense, you know? And, and like my brother said, we're trying to get the hometown fans to support us. You know, uh, my brother, you know, he just fought for the world championship and on ESPN six times. Knockouts of the year. I mean, he went 14 over 14 knockouts. But, you know, never really got the respect from the hometown fans. And now that we get the honor that Andy Ward and Bob Stein just started out letting us fight here at the target center again, we just. You know, hope that uh, people will come and watch and see who we have to offer. Thank you. Yeah, and I want to just thank everybody that's making this happen too. What do you got to say? Uh, and, and he wants to say, you know, he said he beat me twice in the amateur. So, I mean, we didn't fought two years ago because. He didn't have not to gain from me, but now he fighting me because he got everything to win. I don't got nothing to win from him. He's already lost three times, got knocked out twice. So basically this is another opponent for me. This is this I'm telling you. There's another fight, it's another night, and I'm gonna come and do what I do. 
best. This is what I do best. So we're going to see what happens. Any questions? Just like I asked him, the, the first two things are any weaknesses of his that uh, you're willing to talk Man. about? Go with any, any strengths of yours? He's a witness. Like everything he, he do is wicked to me. You know, you come here and talk, I'm going to come and talk. You know, I could have paid you more to come and talk about me than what they're paying you. <laughs> it's going to be nice. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, I, I read uh, an interview with you and Jock, and you're talking about both of them sound brothers. And you said you could beat both of them. I'm wondering, yeah, I'm worrying about the one that, that, I, that I got in front of me right now. So this is what I'm worrying about. The one I got in front of me. Then I worry about whatever they put in front of me. But right now, I got somebody in front of me, and he said he was going to, the ghetto people, <coughs> he was talking about what he said. He said, when he going to step in front of me, because I'm ghetto, that's why he called me ghetto. And he from the ghetto too. Something that I haven't seen in Minnesota since I've been here. Uh, so, I don't know what kind of ghetto he sees in Minnesota. This is one of the best places in the world. So, where the, the streets are clean every day. So, I don't see how can you call Minnesota ghetto. You know what I mean? I never said the ghetto. I said, you can call you, yourself the pretty boy. No, 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 no. no. Boy, you that's what I said. I never said ghetto. Listen, go to Minnesota, pass in that come, and there's a comment in there that he said that he's from the ghetto. He, he know people it's like they're from the ghetto. That would be my house. <laughs> I said, you call yourself a pretty warrior. When you call yourself a pretty warrior, you need to be pretty. He I'm not a warrior. Dude, look at That's yourself, dog. I hope he takes his money to get for the fight and goes and fixes his teeth. Listen, it doesn't matter. What, what, what's up with your forehead, dog? What's up with you? You look like, man, I ain't even gonna talk about you. You're too ugly, dog. I'm a warrior. The pretty warrior is, is just something that came up. Like, you came up with your uh, American boy. Yeah, what's, I love America. That's right. What's wrong with that? I mean, what do you get from that, dog? You know what you're trying to get a name from America. That's all you're trying to do. You want the people to back you up. But that's, it's not, they're not gonna back you up in the ring. It's you and yourself are gonna be in that ring and get your ass whooped. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna be in the other corner whooping your ass. That's what it is. We'll see about that. We'll you know? See about that. Any other questions? Come on, man.